Mountain News First at Four continues. Southeastern Kentucky will have a new attraction this fall that further expands a signature sport. Harness racing is coming to Corbin. A new track and wagering facility is scheduled to open this fall. WIMT's Phil Pendleton has more on the new facility under construction. The oval track is ready. The facilities are well under construction and if everything goes as planned, harness horse track racing will be coming to Corbin on October the 15th. And this is going to be something that a lot of people in this area have been looking forward to for quite some time. The racing will be similar to what you see at the Red Mile in Lexington. I'm told that it'll be the third harness track in Kentucky, the first horse racing track of its kind in this region of the state. The track will be managed by the same company that oversees the Mint in Williamsburg and like it, it will also offer historical horse racing wagering machines. People are expecting this to be a big boon for the area. There's real opportunity here because, you know, we've got a lot of land. It's beautiful here. It's great for horses. It's great for families. It's just a really nice community. So we're really expecting a whole new group of people to come in and, uh, you know, make themselves at home here. Initially, there are expected to be about 15 jobs, but that is expected to grow as this facility expands and grows in the future. Later plans even call for a hotel in this area. In Corbin, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Phil, thank you. Cumberland Run is located just off the Cumberland Bypass on the east side of town. Thousands of Kentuckians must now begin renewing their Medicare and Medicaid plans now that the COVID-19 public health emergency is over. Today in Pikeville, Anthem Medicaid held a renewal resource day at the West Care Perry Klein Emergency Shelter. They also invited community partners such as Goodwill and the Pike County Health Department to offer other programs, vaccines and more. The shelter's program director, Anna Bevan, says this is a wonderful event to spread valuable information to the entire community but it also allows the shelter's clients to find all the information they need in a single place. Just to bring all those resources into one area at the same time makes it a lot easier for our clients to get the things they need done quicker so they can get housing or get a job or whatever they need. Officials with Anthem Medicaid add that more renewal resource days will be coming to communities across the Commonwealth. We'll have much more on this tonight at 6. In southwest Virginia, cleanup efforts for areas in Mercer County are continuing today after heavy rain left many areas submerged over the weekend. Areas of Bluefield got some of the worst damage. Some residents say their basements were filled with water and are now caked with mud. It's never flooded this bad. It was it was terrible. Uh, and like I said, I, I had four feet of water in my basement. Uh, Basically everything that's except the stuff that didn't get floated and flipped over is ruined that's, that's in there. The American Red Cross is going door to door in the area working to figure out an exact amount on the losses. Most of us still seeing sunshine at this hour, at least locally, even though we are starting to see a few of those fair weather clouds trying to increase in size and scope as they try to become a few downpours this evening. 81 is the current reading here in Hazard. You see plenty of sunshine, but again, those fair weather clouds are trying to sneak ever higher in the sky at this hour. Low to even middle 80s in many spots. If you're not there, you're in the upper 70s. So it is still mostly comfortable around the region. Same thing with the fact that the dew points are mostly in the upper 50s to low 60s. That's the best direct measurement of moisture at the surface. It's not too bad out there. We're not quite to summer like levels yet, but I can tell you they're probably not far away. For the most part, we're dry, but if you head south of Highway 80 and mostly west of Interstate 75, got a downpour there on the Wayne County line there with Fentress County, Tennessee, and then, or that's Pickett County, Tennessee, excuse me, and then uh, down the highway from Oneida, Tennessee, that'll let everything continue to move off to the west and uh, maybe a sprinkle or two over near Jellico here as we head over the next little bit. Your forecast first through the next 12 hours. We slowly clear it out tonight as we fall back into the 60s. Steve, I'll have the very latest though on when we return the potential for some heat in a few minutes.
Evan, thank you. A drag racer from is recovering from burns after a fiery crash outside Milwaukee. He says he cannot wait to race again, though, and plans to be back at the same track for the 4th of July. He and his wife share their story with Kaylee Sterall. It's this extreme sport that put David Doffett in the hospital. Uh, we have a 50 year old male, approximately 250 pounds, burns on his head, neck, chest area, and face. At a Memorial Day Classic, his jet engine propelled 1997 Scallywag wheel stander flipped on its side and burst into flames. Even laying on my side, sliding down the wall, scared was not going through my mind. He wasn't ready to go on camera. But over the phone in his hospital bed, he couldn't help but smile. I'm a fire bug, so I love the fire and the smoke. Wearing this burnt jacket, Doffett was taken from the track to the skies. I'm going to be a landing zone command at the entrance of Great Lakes, Great Lakes Dragway. Flight can contact me. A Flight for Life helicopter carried Doffett to the hospital with second degree burns covering his eyes, nose, and neck. One of my promoter buddies just called, says it looked like I went 12 rounds with Mike Tyson. Doffett has been driving these jet cars since he was 18. We graduated high school and I got a jet car license one week after graduating high school. After the pandemic, he quit his job to drive full time. He and his wife now own a jet car business, driving over 30,000 miles across the country each year. To say that there's an addiction is, uh, <laughs> It is an understatement. We'll be back. We love Wisconsin. We race here five weeks out of the year. While the fire may have taken Doffett out of the race, you can't take the fire out of his love for the sport. We're looking forward to getting, getting back, to, uh, back to the racetrack. The family has created a GoFundMe to cover medical costs. A colony of honeybees has taken over a gas station wall in Texas. A bee removal company was called to Honey Bee Patriot. A 7-Eleven gas station in Wichita Falls. Employees say the bees have likely called the place their home for about three years. Bees can form comb within like three weeks, a good sized portion of comb. So after they've been here for about three years, they've actually kind of made this whole wall their home. Because if you start using machinery like lawn mowers or weed whackers or anything that creates a vibration around them, you can agitate them and that's whenever we start running into problems. Mm -hmm. Experts reminded people that bees are dangerous. If they feel threatened, they sting, and vibration from items as simple as outdoor equipment can agitate them. Once the bees were gone, they treated the area so other bees would not return. A coyote attacks a dog in a gut-wrenching moment caught on camera, but fortunately the pup's brother came to the rescue. Joy Benedict has more from Mission Vejo, California. It was a heart-stopping puppy's plea for help, and then a tiny furry hero to the rescue. I knew he was fearless, but I didn't <laughs> understand how fearless. As security cameras captured the moment this 10-pound Maltese mix took on a coyote. Vinny's a superhero. He's, uh, he's always been a scrapper. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's just not afraid of anything. Aaron and David Macaluso couldn't help but gush over the bravery of their dog, Vinny, a scrappy rescue and fearless protector of his younger but slightly larger fur brother. He was a rescue. You know, when we first got him, he, we think he was uh, in a puppy mill. So, you know, he didn't know anything. We had to teach him how to play, you know, and how not to growl. Something that may have come in handy when the pup went into stealth mode. It just saw a white blur coming towards it and it said, I'm out of here. The attack happened a few weeks ago in the backyard of their Mission Viejo home. After walking the dogs, the Macalusos forgot to close the dog door immediately and Harley ran out when he heard a noise. The noise was two coyotes looming by the back gate. One of them leaps through in a flash, chasing and grabbing Harley by the neck, but Vinny heard his cry. He just chased them. Uh, I think he had a, a low-level growl that uh, I think it shocked the coyote. It does look like he jumped on him and he darted this way and then that gave Harley a, an opportunity to flip over and run the other way. At 11 years old, this Maltese doesn't have much physical fight in him, but his heart was clearly on display. I am. I'm looking for a doggy cape because I think he deserves one. I would give him a steak, but he has no teeth. So. <laughs>
That's right, this aging pup can't even chew, nonetheless bite a coyote. Three teeth. That's it. <laughs> Just yep. two lowers and then one molar. As for Harley, he had 20 stitches and a recovery that wasn't easy. They think that he was bitten three or four times, is what the doctor said, and he had a bite on each shoulder. But he had Vinny. And of course, his humans who are now sharing their story so others don't make the same mistake. You hear that coyotes take, you know, dogs off leashes and, you know, come in people's backyards, but it's never, we've never had one in our backyard and we've been here 30 years. So for now, their dog door will stay closed and they'll never underestimate the power of the spirit of this aging rescue pup who risked it all to rescue his brother and then lived to tell this doggone tale of the coyote who attacked but doesn't dare come back. Joy Benedict, KCAL News. Well, back here in Eastern Kentucky, Belfry High School head football coach Philip Haywood is using the summer to celebrate success. The eight-time state champion just released his second book, giving readers a look into the ups and downs of success. The book called Climb the Mountain looks back on the last eight years of Belfry's football seasons as the coach reflects on the lessons he taught and those he learned along the way. I've been working on it for three or four years with COVID and different things going on in, in our lives. It's taken maybe a little longer than I anticipated, uh, but it, it, it's about... Uh, personal growth, leadership, success, overcoming adversity. The book is available today on Amazon. We'll hear more from Coach Haywood coming up at 6. But next here on First